Spending 50 hours on a perfect factory or power plant can turn into a nightmare if it doesn't run at top efficiency. Is the issue a misplaced tiered belt, or is there a headlift problem, or just pipe bugs? Regardless of the problem, there are ways to check and fail safe our factories to avoid this headache. Take for example in my last Let's Play episode, which I'll put in the cards above, I built this turbo fuel factory producing 1200 packaged turbo fuel per minute. Pretty awesome. The plan with this was to send them to this turbo fuel plant, which we've just built, but this was to turn into a complete disaster. After 50 hours, I've only just managed to turn my power plant on with roughly 95 to 100% efficiency. And for once, it wasn't because I was spending hundreds of hours designing a beautiful plant. No, I had dozens of problems causing this power plant to run at 70% efficiency. And none of this would have happened if I had planned with fail safes in mind. So let's cover the issues that I had and then the fail safes that we could implement so that we don't have this problem in the future. Firstly, let's talk about power. For me, building the turbo plant, I was running out of time. I had a power deficit and update 8 hadn't yet arrived. So we were solely reliant on a few power storage units to allow me to get the power plant up and running before my whole factory shut down. And with us transporting the fuel via train over a large distance, lacking power would have made a whole job so much harder. So I rushed at the first section, which meant some belts were tier 3 rather than tier 4, which caused a knock-on effect once the plant was built. Obviously this is something that can be quite easily fixed once you know of the issue, but had I not had that concern, that worry to, to try and get me to, to fix the power as soon as possible, we wouldn't have had a problem. So from my experience, it is always better to build power plants when you still have a power overhead available, or at the very minimum use power storage and make sure that you have a large storage available. Had I built a larger storage, I wouldn't have had a small amount of time to get the plant up and running, but there is a better failsafe now that update 8 has arrived, and that's the priority power switches. These can create small dedicated circuits for power production solely, so that your power will never totally go out. You'll always have power supplying the miners uh, or the, the factories that you need in order to produce the fuel or the, the coal to run the power plants. So that in that case, only factories that are less prioritized will have their power cut to them. So how can we set up the priority power switch for this? First, connect your power production and group them with a priority power switch and then move them to fuse group one. You'll also want to label them such as coal power plant, turbo power plant or miners for power production, just so that you know what they produce and that they're needed in order to run power. Now with them in fuse group 1, this will mean that they are the last factories to be turned off during an outage. This is really important. The next thing that we're going to be doing is adding all the other factories and labeling them with their own power switch and then moving them to the other fuse groups. So the higher the number the fuse group in the automatic fuse protection sequence, the higher up they will be in the priority queue to be turned off. So if you do run out of power, the factories in group A will be turned off first, followed by the next factories in line until the power stabilizes. The next problem that I came across was originally I had planned to recycle the empty canisters, sending them back from the turbo fuel plant to the turbo fuel factory. But with time being so short, and power running out fast, I opted to sink the canisters until I got the factory running. This was fine until I started recycling the empty canisters, which I had planned. At the time, I had a push-pull train at one end connecting to a loop. Now, this is a bad idea, and this meant that every full journey that the train made, the freights would swap. 
And when you're only using turbo fuel and dropping that off, that's not an issue. But now that we've added another resource, this means that the freights would swap. So we would have empty canisters on an input instead of packaged turbo fuel being an input. As I mentioned, I knew this was going to be a problem, but for that, I had turned the system off temporarily so that I could fix it. However, with me streaming the whole build between the first stream and the second stream, I'd forgotten that I had to fix that issue. So I turned the plant on and all the empty packages ended up in the tight manifolds of my package turbo fuel unpackages. A couple of hours later, I'd removed the manifolds and rebuilt them. And I'm sure we've all been in similar situations with other resources going to the wrong inputs and shutting down a factory. The failsafe is really simple. Before every factory line, if you're bringing in multiple resources, make sure to place a smart splitter. Then we can siphon off any non-specific resources and these can go to a sink or to storage but i highly recommend doing it at least while you're setting up a factory because when this does happen it's such a pain to sort out it really is now speaking of bringing multiple resources into a factory if you're bringing large amounts of resources through multiple stations I highly recommend setting up a belt balancer. In this factory for compacted coal, we had three trains bringing in sulfur between two stations, and this created a disproportionate amount of sulfur on two of the four lines that were going to the compact coal factory, which eventually caused one side of the compacted coal line to stall occasionally, reducing the production of the turbo fuel. Now, I was unaware of this, so I just saw that the turbo fuel was every now and then producing a few less and that meant that the whole factory wasn't running as efficiently as I wanted. So if you are bringing multiple trains to one station do use a balancer to fail safe the system, splitting the inputs across all the outputs equally. Now I've done this here by splitting the freight ones and twos outputs and merging them with each other so that each line will always receive equal resources. This system also works really well because they align perfectly with the train outputs. So if you are interested in seeing more of these balances, do let me know in the comments below and perhaps I'll do a video specifically on that. Speaking of balances, these can actually be great fail safes for longer manifolds as well. So in theory, a manifold should run perfectly after its warm up cycle. But if you're finding one or two packages aren't receiving enough resources at the end of your line, perhaps because you have a train that's dropping off resources and there's a cut in resources for a little bit like you can see is happening here you can fix this by semi balancing the lines you can do this by distributing the resources from the center of the manifold rather than one end this means that both ends of the manifold will receive the resources at the same ratios whereas the other way has the priority at one end meaning there's a lack of resources at the other Alternatively though, you can run balancers throughout all of your factories and perfectly balance, load balance all of the lines. But the problem with that is it can get a little bit complicated, especially when you're dealing with ratios of numbers split across multiple factories. Now, one thing that I do also have a problem with is building the plants in sections. I always want to build the whole thing all at once, but I would actually save myself uh, so much trouble if I did it all in sections and then turning them on individually one by one. And from there, we can see if we need or if there's an issue. And if so, we can quite easily spot where the issue is. Take, for example, my power plant here. We should be producing 40,000 megawatts of power. If there's an issue, I have to work through the whole plant to work out where the issue is. Thankfully, it can be made easier with the use of priority power switches. But if we know each section should produce 10,000 megawatts, and we know that three of them are producing the needed 10,000 megawatts, we know that the fourth section is where the problem is, and we can work back from there. And the problem can also be down to multiple issues, which we should probably speak about. So for example, there could be pipe bugs and one section not receiving the full amount. And a couple of the pipe bugs that you should be aware of by now is that if you're placing items on pipes, such as valves, pumps, and junctions, you may find that the 
liquids aren't flowing through so always replace the connected pipes so they're fresh occasionally you'll notice mark 2 pipes not flowing at full capacity so with that i recommend using two mark 1 pipes rather than one mark 2 and another issue is pipe holes where possible do not use them and if you do always check the flow making sure that you're receiving the desired amount of resources sometimes they won't work at all surprisingly though my power plant should run at 100 percent production and for a long time I couldn't work out what the reason was why it wasn't running at full efficiency until one of our Twitch stream viewers Ronan suggested turning off each generator manually to allow the fuel to saturate the pipes now it took a fair amount of time individually turning off the generators and then once it fills up turning them back on but as you can see it has fixed the issue now the plant is running at full capacity and has been running without issue for the last few hours so I presume that by filling up the pipes what that's done is stop the backflow of liquids allowing the power to stabilize and on the subject of the pipes if there are any doubts as to the head lift and if you're you're reaching the max head lift just place a place a pump on the end save yourself a lot of effort and struggle just put a pump redo the pipes and rest assured that it should work but there you are guys i'm also going to be sharing the let's play of this soon i hope you enjoy it but thought you might appreciate this fail safe tips video for your factories in the meantime currently i'm playing a lot of starfield as well as satisfactory daily so why not join over on my twitch live streams at twitch.tv forward slash total eclipse until next time thank you for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters on patreon most notably our solo clips patrons james owen fireflesh and treble as well as our lunars the calamity ben star and that dude aw as well as our blood moon of the day which today is scooter until next time as always, ciao for now.